There are 66 weapons in Lunacid. Some of these are easy to find right along your main path while playing the game. Some of them are random drops from enemies. Some can be a bit tricky to obtain and others are hidden behind sometimes pretty obtuse secrets. So in this video, I'm gonna walk us through obtaining every single one of these. It'll be broken into chapters, one for each weapon, so you can quickly find exactly what you're looking for. Anyway, let's begin. And this first one is the irreplaceable, amazingly interesting Axe of Harming, the speedrunner's weapon of choice. You can obtain it in the same area as Daedalus in the Forbidden Archives on that ground floor. This one definitely ranks amongst the most obtuse secrets in the game. So you may have already noticed this tree and been like, huh, that's weird. I wonder why it's growing like that, whatever. But if you stand in front of it and place your crosshair directly in the center of that loop and just wait about 10 seconds, you get an uwu pop up on screen. And you might think that's interesting. But then if you check your weapon inventory, you'll notice a new addition, the Axe of Harming. With an impressive negative 1900% guard, meaning with this equipped, you actually take more damage. That's 20 times more damage when blocking, to be precise. But with a 180 backstep, what can you do with a 180 backstep? Well, this is not possible with any other weapon in the game. Yeah, that's why this weapon is used in speedruns, because it's actually pretty easy to get in the very beginning of the game. If you start as Shinobi, you should be able to make this jump with a little bit of practice to get into the Forbidden Archives right from the start. Anyway, that's enough about the Axe of Harming, let's move on to the next. The Battle Axe can be found at the end of the Fetid Mire, just before the entrance to the Sanguine Sea. It's very easy to find, you just make a left instead of a right, and then you just follow this tunnel straight ahead, and it will be over here on your right. The Blade of Justina can be found in a dead end of the catacombs beneath the Accursed Tomb. The catacombs are a maze of tunnels, but it's not that complex, so just sticking to one wall should eventually bring you to this open coffin. Casting a blood spell such as Blood Strike or Blood Spray on the skeleton should clue you in that something interesting happened as the skeleton vanishes with a creepy laugh. After leaving the room, you'll notice a shining treasure in the distance. This is the Blade of Justina, a dark damage dealing dagger. The Blade of Ophelia can be found inside of La Fenu Castle. Inside the tomb of Ophelia, you'll find this journal resting atop her coffin. Turning to the right, there is a secret door behind this chair. And ahead, impaled in an altar, is the Blade of Ophelia. Interestingly, attacking enemies with this weapon will allow you to regenerate HP. Next is my favorite weapon in the entire game, Blessed Wind, probably because I've always been a huge fan of Symphony of the Night's Chrysogrim. Anyway, at the end of the latest chasm, you will find this unfortunate soul who left a diary entry, giving a little bit of a hint that there is something else here to be found. That something else is the Blessed Wind. You will need to ascend an invisible bridge in order to reach the alcove where the sword is held. The easiest way to do this is to simply fire a ranged weapon in front of you. Crossbow bolts and arrows will actually stick into the invisible platform, making it much easier for you to tell which way you need to go. You can also cast the Coffin spell in order to tell where there is safe ground to stand on. Or if you're good at using the Barrier spell, you can even parkour up your own rock barriers if you're fast. Personally, I prefer to use the Coffin method or the Ranged Weapon method. Eventually, after perhaps a heart attack or two, you'll make it up to this alcove with a cave entrance leading you to the glorious home of the Blessed Wind. An amazing sword that attacks extremely quickly. It does pure physical damage, so if you're fighting anything at all that does not resist physical damage, then this is the weapon to use. Interestingly enough, the Chrysogrim from Castlevania Symphony of the Night is also known as Valmon Way, and Valmon Way translates to Blessed Wind. The normal method for accessing the latest chasm is on the third floor of the Forbidden Archives. After progressing through Castle Le Fanu and acquiring Vampiric Symbol A, this door will magically open, granting you access to the chasm. However, Blessed Wind is obtainable very early in the game by spamming the Coffin spell in front of the statue right at the start of Hollow Basin. You can build sort of a staircase of coffins and then jump into the shining light to immediately be whisked away to the Great Well surface. 
through which you can access the latest chasm. You can also, with a little bit of trial and error, actually platform off of summoned snails. So if you get that spell really early in the game, then you can access the Great Well surface directly through Wing's Rest. <laughs> Meaning that if that spell drops, you could potentially get the Blessed Wind before even accessing the second area of the game. Insanity. Our next weapon, the Brittle Arming Sword, is randomly dropped from the malformed horse enemies inside the secret sealed ballroom area of Le Fanu Castle. Once you unlock it, this is a fairly easy area to farm because it's small enough that you can just run in, kill a few of these enemies, and then exit and re-enter the area door that's close by in order to continuously respawn these. If you don't know how to get to the sealed ballroom, it's simple. Just head out to the left side of the castle exterior and then attack this round window with poison damage. I use the slime orb spell. Then inside the castle, just simply head to the second floor on the left and then run through the dining room and the first door on your left will lead to the sealed ballroom, now uncovered for solving that secret. The Brittle Arming Sword is also true to its name. Yes, it can do a lot of damage, but it's brittle and breaks. In order to repair it, you need to bring it to the Smith's Grave inside of Wing's Rest. Our next weapon is the Broken Hilt, itself pretty useless, but it does upgrade eventually into a very nice weapon. We're at the Fetid Mire, and in order to get it, you have to travel all the way down to the rat-infested Underworks. Once there, just follow my path. We jump over here to the left, and then keep going forward, pass a million rats, and then make another left. From this gate, I'm just going to jump into the water and then head back around the corner this way, pass underneath this bridge, and then here on the right is a little submerged tunnel leading into the area on the other side of that gate. And here I'm just going to take care of the slime skeleton real fast. And then right here on the floor in front of a skeleton next to a lore book, you will find the Broken Hilt. This one could be kind of a pain to level up, but remember that you can just go around Wing's Rest smashing everything in there in order to level it up quickly. You can summon coffins and just smash those. You can go to the entrance of the Yosei Forest and smash all the breakables there and get items as well as XP. You got options. The Broken Lance can be seen right at the beginning of the Terminus Prison. In order to actually obtain it, we head out here, pass by the first jail cell, this is assuming you've already unlocked them, head into the second one, and just follow this around, and it will eventually lead you directly to the Broken Lance. The Corrupted Dagger has been made a little bit more difficult to obtain in the 1.0 update, because it has been placed on top of one of these pillars outside of Castle Lefanu. I used Icarian Flight, but you can also stack coffins, you can use the barrier spell, anything else that allows you to climb. If you decide to do that, Coffin is a spell that you can find pretty close by in the Accursed Tomb. You have yourself a pretty early game weapon that has a ranged option. You can switch it between melee and ranged by pressing the block button. But it does dark damage, of course. Next, we have the crossbow, a very good early game weapon sold by Cheryl the Crow at Wing's Rest. And then the Cursed Blade, which is a fairly rare drop from the Phantom enemies, most of which can be found outside the castle. Followed by the Dark Greatsword, which is the upgraded version of the Rusted Sword, which I'll talk about later. And then we have the Dark Rapier, which can be found outside submerged in the blood moat of Castle Lefanu. Next, we have the Death Scythe which drops when you kill death, which requires you to first craft the Limbo Sword, which I will talk more about when it's that weapon's time. But if you want a full detailed guide on how to obtain both the Death Scythe and the Limbo Sword, then I already made this video, which goes into depth about all that. You can find all that information in the Tartarus Ending Guide part of the video. And don't worry about accidentally spoiling one of the endings for yourself, I clearly label the chapters. So as long as you don't click on that ending chapter itself, you'll be fine. There's 66 weapons, so this video is going to be long enough. Anyway, let's continue. Alright, now the Double Crossbow is the upgraded version version of the crossbow. And the elfin bow can be obtained inside the Yosei forest on the ground floor behind a tree inside this chest. And then you can use that elfin bow or any ranged weapon in order to shoot down the elfin sword, which is in the branches of this tree right in front of the entrance to the lower part of the Yosei forest. 
and then getting enough XP to level up that Elfin Sword will give you the Elfin Long Sword. Likewise, eventually getting enough XP to level up the Broken Hilt will give you the very cool Fire Sword. And now, in a lower hallway of the Terminus Prison, speckled with large shadows of fish, you will find the very interesting Fishing Spear, which can be wielded both as a melee spear and a thrown javelin, simply by clicking the block button. The Golden Kopesh can be found wielded by one of the Ampu enemies inside the pyramid section of the Boiling Grotto. I farmed the one on the top floor of the ruin, and it did take about 10 or 11 tries. Just remember that you must farm the one that is wielding the weapon that you want. Either the Golden Kopesh or the Golden Sickle, which is the next weapon. There are more Ampu wielding this than the Kopesh, so this one is a little bit easier to farm. Now, for the Halberd, we're going to head to the Catacombs of the Accursed Tomb. This portcullis can be opened by hitting it with any kind of light damage, such as that from the Vampire Hunter Sword. In this hallway, we're going to make the first left into the room containing the Halberd. The Hammer of Cruelty is the weapon of Garrett the Hound, who has misplaced it inside the Terminus Prison. On the third floor, accessed via ladder from the Angel Well room where you obtain the Icarian Flight Ring, you can just follow my path here. You can already see it now peeking around the corner. It's gigantic. Garrett does ask you for this weapon back if you talk to him again, but if you don't talk to him again, you get to keep it. Now, this weapon apparently does not count at all towards the achievement. Same as the Death Scythe, actually. But obviously I wanted to put every single weapon in an all-weapons video. Moving on, the Heritage Sword is what you get when you upgrade the first weapon in the game, the Replica Sword. And the Ice Sickle is a random drop from Milk Snails. Interestingly, this is the only Ice Element weapon in the entire game, and it's pretty strong, so if you get lucky and this drops really early, then you have a nice weapon for a good bit of the game. In order to obtain the Iron Claw, you must survive a pretty devious La Milana-esque trap in the Boiling Grotto. You can find this room halfway through the trap-filled dungeon leading to the Ignis Calor magic ring. You can see it shining in the distance, but as soon as you pick it up, the portcullis slams shut and the ceiling begins to drop. You will be crushed to death unless you teleport out like I did, or potentially stop the ceiling by using the barrier spell or coffins. However, when I tried this, I still died, so I still recommend teleporting out. The Iron Club is obtained by upgrading the Stone Club. The Iron Torch is obtained by upgrading the Torch. The Jailer's Candle. This is a good one. This is obviously obtained by farming the Jailers of the Terminus Prison until they drop it. However, the Infested Corpses might also drop it. The Jotun Slayer is sold by Cheryl the Crow at Wing's Rest after you first beat the game and get the normal ending. It does cost several hundred silver. So again, a really good money farming spot is the spawn area of Yose Forest. Just smashing all those breakables. And you can also drop down to the forest floor and fight the Kodama spirit bunny enemies because they drop a lot of money as well. The Limbo Sword is obtained through alchemy by combining Fractured Life, Fractured Death, and the Broken Sword. Again, if you want details about how to obtain all those, it's in the Tartarus section of that ending guide video. The Lyrian Longsword is a random drop from the Vampire Page enemies inside La Fanu Castle, most of which can be found in the Hallways section. And the Lyrian Greatsword is what you get when you upgrade the Lyrian Longsword. The footage for the next one has a little bit of a spoiler for the final fight of the game, so just keep that in mind. Suffice to say that you can't miss this weapon if you just progress through the game. But the Lucid Blade is automatically obtained by the player when entering the second phase of the Cursed Knight Saxarius fight. For the next weapon, we return to the secret sealed ballroom of Le Fanu Castle. Inside a chamber filled with mist that drains your XP, you will find the extremely nice and quick Marauder's Black Flail. Moonlight is definitely the most involved weapon to obtain, because it requires you to first find and then make it all the way through the Tower of Abyss. In order to find the tower, we're going to begin at the crystal in the Boiling Grotto, directly across from which is a secret room. I'm just going to show now that there is another path into this room from the other side, 
It's right next to Cheryl the Crow and Sir Hicket the Invincible. Returning to the previous room, there's a readable journal on the floor. Turn right, there's a secret door right here with an interesting looking coffin inside. Get in. Climbing into the coffin triggers a cutscene where you fall into the hole and then wake up on top of the coffin, slowly floating down a subterranean river towards the entrance of the Tower of Abyss. The tower itself is a 50 floor gauntlet of combat, one room per floor, filled with every enemy in the game, including some unique ones that are not found anywhere else. Between every five floors is a hallway suspended above nothingness, containing a chest with a useful item. And after making it through all 50 floors and then opening the door at the end of this hallway, we are greeted with a tranquil sight of the glorious Moonlight Greatsword, or in this game, Moonlight. The Moonlight Sword achievement will pop, and then you are free to grab your prize. This sword is one of the best weapons in the entire game, dealing a hefty amount of damage as well as possessing a ranged attack that does cost a little bit of mana each time. But it's still an amazing weapon, which if you obtain it before the end game, this will be a weapon that you use throughout much of it. Moving on, the Obsidian Poison Guard and Obsidian Curse Sword are random drops from the few Obsidian Skeletons you can fight in the game. You can find these either in the Boiling Grotto or in the Asylum section of Terminus Prison. Out of every random drop in the game, obtaining this took me the longest at several hours to finally get this drop. Keep in mind that you can only obtain one of these, so if the shield drops for you like it did for me, then you will not get the sword to drop. All you gotta do is just bring it to the smith's grave at wing's rest in order to turn it from the shield to the sword and back. Whichever one you might want the most. Again, you can't have the sword and the shield at the same time. But in order for the all weapons achievement to pop, keep in mind that you do need every weapon in your inventory, so make sure to at least switch this back and forth a couple times between the sword and shield. In order to obtain the obsidian seal from the drop off in the water dungeon, we just want to go straight and keep going straight past that first left and make the second left down here, and then turn left and face the wall, where you'll find another secret door. In here, at the end, you'll find the Obsidian Seal. The Poison Claw is the third and final upgrade for the Iron Claw. And in order to obtain the Privateer Musket, you must first complete a quest for Cheryl the Crow in the Boiling Grotto. She wants you to remove the invincible golden armor from Sir Hicket the Invincible. In order to do that, you must use the Ignis Calor spell that you find at the end of the trap-filled desert dungeon in this area. After doing so, Cheryl's happy, of course, she has a bunch of gold now. And then simply leaving and reloading the area will restock Cheryl's shop with two new items, the Oil Lantern and the Privateer Musket. It only costs 120 silver, but again, the entrance to the Yosei Forest is a great spot to farm silver. Once again, the rapier is sold along with the steel needle and the crossbow by Cheryl the Crow right from the beginning of the game. Speaking of the beginning of the game, the replica sword is the very first weapon that you will find. It's extremely difficult to miss this one. It's the very first shiny you'll find after walking down that first hallway after spawning into the game. After that, and after ascending this staircase in the Temple of Silence, the ritual dagger can be found right around the corner right here. Now, the Rusted Sword can be found either as a random drop from the Mummy Knights inside the Temple of Silence, or if you don't acquire it that way, then you can find it inside the Yosei Forest, inside this plant bulb that you can open by spraying with blood magic. Saint Ishi is the upgraded version of the Obsidian Seal found in the Water Dungeon. And now for the Serpent Fang. From the crystal inside the Labyrinth of Ash, I'm gonna assume that you already went through this entire place and unlocked this gate. We're just gonna pass underneath that gate, make the first left, and then the secret door is pretty obvious here. However, the puzzle on the other side of the secret door is anything but. What we have here is a series of four hallways. They all look the same. Interestingly, there are glyphs that appear on this relief. Taking a closer look, these actually give you the solution to the puzzle. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to walk us through it right now. From the start, facing that hint structure, we make the first right. And then, the first right again. And then, the second left. And then, 
The first right again. And then the second left. At this point, a book will appear on the altar. However, this is just a red herring to make you think that you solved everything. You did not. This is only the halfway point. So we step all the way back and make that first left. Then go back through the same way you came in. First right. And then step forward, make that second left again. Now step backwards and make that first right. Then make that first right one final time. And there, in front of you, shines your prize, impaled in the broken structure, the Serpent Fang. I have to inject my opinion here real fast. I thought this puzzle was amazing, but the prize for solving it may be a little underwhelming. But in the end, it is still a really good weapon, and it does a lot of damage. Now, in order to find the Shadow Blade, the elusive Shadow Blade, we head to the Earth Dungeon where you can find one of these gloom woods in the middle of a field. The funny thing about gloom woods is that they typically guard doorways, meaning that there must be a door someplace around here. Voila! We have a hidden door. Proceed through this tunnel absolutely swarming with carnivorous plants, and at the end, stabbed into the earth, you will find the Shadow Blade. A really good weapon that has a really bad drawback. It almost completely blinds you when you have it equipped. <laughs> However, the Shining Blade is the upgraded version of the Shadow Blade, which removes the permanent blinding effect and changes the damage type from dark to light. The Silver Rapier is the upgraded version of the Rapier purchased from Cheryl. It also gains light damage. The Skeleton Axe is a bone axe that randomly drops from skeletons. Imagine that. Next, the Steel Claw is the second upgrade for the Iron Claw, before you upgrade it to the Poison Claw. And the Steel Club is the upgraded version of the Iron Club, itself upgraded from the Stone Club. And the Steel Lance is the upgraded version of the Broken Lance. And for the last time, the Steel Needle can be purchased from Cheryl the Crow at any time. The Steel Spear is found at the top of the path that heads through the Hollow Basin between the Temple of Silence and the Yosei Forest. You just head out of the lower jail cell section of the Temple of Silence and then up the long staircase, and the spear will be in a little cubbyhole right in front of you. The Stone Club can be found in a room branching off from this natural tunnel inside the Temple of Silence, real close to the entrance of the Fetid Mire. The Saxarian Dagger is a random drop from the dagger-wielding Saxarian Knights in the Forlorn Arena. Likewise, the Saxarian Spear is a random drop from the spear-wielding Saxarian Knights inside the Forlorn Arena. The torch is placed right along your path between the Hollow Basin and the Temple of Silence, probably because it's extremely useful for the extremely dark Temple of Silence, i.e. it's almost impossible to miss. Speaking of extremely useful weapons, the Twisted Staff is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. It eventually mostly gets replaced by the Jailer's Candle, which functions pretty much as an upgraded version of it, but the Twisted Staff can be acquired extremely early game, especially if you rush to the Accursed Tomb. It's located down in the catacombs, specifically past the gate into the mausoleum. So you'll need some kind of light damage early on in order to acquire this, but lucky for you, the Vampire Hunter Sword does light damage and it also is acquired here in the catacombs. Anyway, once you're in the mausoleum, it's pretty much a straight shot. You won't have to worry about death if you don't dally for too long in here. Just head straight in, stick to the right hand side, and then right here between these two flowers is the hidden door leading to a coffin containing Gandalf's walking stick, i.e. the twisted staff. Even though it is a magical staff, the game considers it a ranged weapon, and thus it scales with dexterity. However, even if you don't put any points or many points at all into dexterity, this weapon still slays. It is very good. And now for that aforementioned Vampire Hunter Sword, which is the earliest weapon you can obtain that deals light damage. Unless you buy the rapier from Cheryl the Crow and then level it up to the Silver Rapier, making it a very useful weapon, especially in the Accursed Tomb. 
It's down in the catacombs, so just follow my path pretty much straight ahead, make the first right, then you make a left at the blue light, then the first right after that, then make a right again, past this glowing branch on the left side, loop around to the right, the only way to go, and you'll see this staircase, at the top of which is a little tomb with the vampire hunter sword hanging on the wall. Don't do what I did. Don't attack it. It's your friend. Just pick it up off the wall. Don't forget to open the shortcut by flipping this lever. Something that I didn't mention was that I already killed all the mare that were down there in the catacombs. If you don't have the summon fairy spell, you're going to want to just run past them unless you have some other weapon that might be able to damage them early on such as the Silver Rapier. And now we get to the Wand of Power, which can be found in the Cattle Cells subsection of Castle Le Fanyul. Inside this cell, there is a hidden door over here on the right, opening into a spooky, twisty hallway. There's literally no other way to go, so just follow it to its end. And pick up the Wand of Power, which is a very interesting weapon that fires a random element each time. So although the Icicle is the only weapon in the game that is dedicated to ice damage, the Wand of Power can randomly fire it as well. Even though it could do a lot of damage, the random aspect makes it maybe not the most reliable weapon, but it's still pretty cool. And now we head to the Forbidden Archives to pick up the second to last weapon on the list. The Wolfram Greatsword, a gigantic hunk of metal which bears a striking similarity to a certain weapon from a certain manga. It's located on the top floor inside of a secret room inside this room right here, which is normally filled with Necronomicons and Enlightened Ones. As soon as we head inside the secret room, you can tell immediately what I was talking about obviously inspired by Berserk. A massive sword made of a rare metal called Tungsten. Anyway, now we get to the last weapon, which is not really a weapon at all, but a shield. Inside the Temple of Silence, behind a secret door, next to this journal, right here, you will find a large room with a larger number of mummies and mummy knights inside. Survive long enough in here to find the wooden shield next to this skeleton. Don't become like this skeleton. Escape immediately or just kill all those things. And that's it. After you obtain every single weapon, the achievement might not pop. You might have to reforge some of those weapons that can be forged back and forth between two different versions, such as the Obsidian Poison Guard and the Obsidian Curse Brand, or in my case, I had to reforge the Shining Blade back into the Shadow Blade, and then it finally popped. Anyway, there we go, guys. I have to thank each and every one of you so much. So thank you. Thank you for watching. I really, really hope that this video helps a lot of you out there. I put a lot of work into it. There are a lot of weapons. Some of them are pretty well hidden. So hopefully this does help you guys. Thank you again for watching. Have an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Happy lunaciting or dreaming or whatever.